Greg Staker here at Westside Medical. Today we're going to talk about how disc injuries occur and what you can do to help prevent them as well as to help in the healing process. So we look here at the anatomy of a disc. This here, we'll focus on this one. This is the cross-sectional view of a disc. So you have this outer part here called the annulus fibrosis and this middle part here called the nucleus pulposus. The annulus fibrosus is a dense fibrous portion this nucleus pulposus is kind of like a bag of water, so when you have compression on the spine, this nucleus pulposus pushes out into the annulus fibrosus, and that displaces the compression. And so what happens in a disc injury, the current school of thought is before you have any kind of a disc irritation, what happens is a person will experience a vertebral end plate fracture, a stress fracture, so this vertebral end plate Right here, you get an actual fracture in. This can occur from um, possible fall. It could be from a repetitive stress injury, um, stuff like that. So when you have that stress fracture, let's visualize this here as the end plate. So you have that stress fracture. It causes an inflammatory reaction. And that affects the internal environment of, of the uh, nucleus pulposus. So the, it's either the inflammation or the pH. There's, there's different theories out there. But what happens is, we'll go over here. When you have that injury, the inflammation throws off how the nucleus pulposus makes proteoglycan, or which is the molecule that attracts water. And so when the, the cartilage cells aren't making that molecule, it goes through what we call internal disc disruption. That's a $10 word for this disc is not as hydrated as it should be. And so as you lose hydration here, you get kind of this, they call it like the bulging tire effect, where this starts to flatten, and then this, you get some kind of like compression and loosening. You eventually get these little micro tears through here. And this nucleus pulposus, it starts working into these tears. And if you look at the anatomy here, this is the front of the disc here, and this is the back. So this here, is a spinous process. When you touch your back and you feel those little bumps, this is the bone that you're feeling. And so the majority of the discs, they start working posterior. So this would be more of a, a bulge. You might not even see it on an MRI. Like a lot of times you have a disc injury, you don't see it on an MRI because you don't necessarily have a bulge. But then as progression goes, you get these radial tears. Eventually the nucleus pulposus herniates out through here, and that's called a herniation. And what causes the actual pain in the low back, as we talked about, it's not necessarily always pressure on a nerve. Like when you have a disc here, this is a very severe herniation. This could, could cause compression on this nerve through here, which you see some swelling, which could cause sciatica and stuff like that. But the majority of disc injuries, it's more of an irritation, where this is irritated and the inflammatory reaction is causing that low back pain. It might feel like a toothache. It could actually irritate a nerve, also duplicating sciatica. And so what you want to do is you want to enable this healing process. So you want to somehow pump in oxygen nutrients into this area. <clears> that's with the hydration of the nucleus pulposus, as well as you want inflammation clearance. Now, inflammation is not the bad guy. Inflammation is not bad. It has to be managed. So you want to pump the old inflammation out that carries the different waste factors, deoxygenated blood, making room for new inflammation to come in, carrying different, different growth factors. And so my office, we like to use the reverse hyper to do this. And first we'll talk about patient placement. Now, if you, if you remember, this here is the front of the disc, and this here is the back. So with the reverse hyper, you lay face down your stomach. So if you look at this here, this is you laying face down your stomach. And what it does is it allows for gravity to help with the posterior migration of this lower disc here. So you're laying on your stomach and gravity's pushing down this way, so it's helping to centralize this nucleus pulposus where it needs to be. And I'll demonstrate here shortly, so the, the motion that you go through. But so with the reverse hyper, you're in the ideal position for the disc for the healing process to occur. It's also when you're laying on your stomach, it's the lowest inner disc pressure that you can be in. So this pressure gradient is already lowered, so you're, you're allowing yourself to have that lower working gradient. And so once you're on the machine, you're going to go through this range of motion, and it's going to pump these muscles here as well as compress 
relax this disc. And the compression and relaxation actually increases diffusion into the disc here, and it carries the oxygen nutrients that helps with the healing as well as it helps this nucleus pulposus make more of that proteoglycan or that fancy molecule that helps to keep it hydrated. So let me demonstrate how the reverse hyper works. This here is a reverse hyper uh, invented by Louis Simmons, and I'll demonstrate. You step here, and you step here so you get this patient in this comfortable position. You have them hinge at the hips, and you want their hips on top of the table, and you want the pivot point to be about the femur head here. And so you lay down, it relaxes all his anti-gravity tissues, it allows the disc to start migrating posterior, from the posterior to the front to the center where it needs to be. So you have an abdominal brace, flex the lats, and then start working through this range of motion. So you get a contraction and relaxation. You just have them work it. And that's going to allow diffusion into the disc to help work out the ir irritation. It's going to help clear the inflammation, as well as it's going to strengthen those muscles that help the shearing of the vertebra. So in my office, we start off three sets of ten, eventually work to four sets of ten and five sets of ten. So for more information on this table, visit westside-medical.com.